This morning in the reopened inquest into the death of unionist Dr. Neil Agat. Nicholas Dietlefs, who was a warrant officer and interrogator at the notorious John Foster prison, told the court of the technique that he used to get information from Agat. Dr. Agat was found hanging in his cell in the early hours of the 5th of February 1982. Dietlefs told the court how he used to put detainees at ease while he interrogated them. He says his line of questioning was specifically on finding out about communism, the ANC and terrorism. He says he interviewed Agat on the 30th of January 1982 and he seemed relaxed as he spoke about general issues. Dietlefs is giving testimony at the Johannesburg High Court. Well, for more on this story, we cross to our reporter, Nozin Dombi Mia, who's standing by for us. Nozin Dombi, just tell us more about what Mr. Ditlefs was saying. Well, thank you so much, uh, Nompu. Nicholas uh, Dietlefs was basically trying to draw a picture of his role in uh, the interrogation of Dr. Neil Agat. And what he was trying to explain today was that um, he'd interrogated Neil on the 30th of January, which was a Saturday. And he'd done so because the chief interrogators to Neil Agat, Whitehead and another lieutenant, had gone to a party uh, on that night and hadn't uh, interrogated. Neil. He said what they did for that uh, evening was to talk and in talking with Neil he then got a sense from Neil that Neil was very unhappy uh, with the fact that he had revealed some information that could have incriminated uh, some of the detainees or either some of the um, anti-apartheid activists who are working underground and this was a great source of um, you know struggle and unhappiness for him and he he believes, and this is Dietlefs, Dietlefs um, believes that this could have been one of the reasons that could have contributed to Dr. Agat uh, uh, feeling suicidal. And he says that uh, later in the day of that uh, Saturday, late in the evening, Whitehead came back from his event, and that was the end of the interrogation that he'd had with Neil. On the Monday, the following Monday, Whitehead called him to his offices on the 10th floor just to correct uh, some of the information that he'd taken down from uh, Agate, and he said it was at that point where he reiterated to Whitehead um, his concerns about Dr. Agate's mental health and that Dr. Agate possibly could be suicidal as uh, a result of all the anxiety and the guilt he would have felt because of the information he disclosed. And Dietler said that a few days later he then found out from somebody that Agat had killed himself. And what was quite interesting in that part, Nompo, he was saying that he heard from somebody in the office on the 10th floor that Agat had hung himself with a tablecloth, a tablecloth that had been given to him by a family member in December. And obviously we all know that that is not correct. So it's quite interesting to see where his testimony is going and where it will go as um, the lawyers for the Agat family begin their cross-examination of Nicholas Dietlung's um, uh, evidence uh, uh, in chief. Presumably that's what we can expect to happen after lunch. Yes, no, and you know what was quite interesting is that uh, the lawyer for the Agat family, advocate Howard Varney, made a statement by the Agat family, and the Agat family said that all the witnesses that are the police witnesses, if one, they testify honestly and truthfully about their role in in the death of Dr. Neil Agat, the family itself would not pursue any legal action or any further legal action in terms of prosecution. However, if any of the witnesses, the police witnesses, are found to have actually lied under oath, lied in this court, then they will make sure that as the Agat family, they pursue the full might of the law of prosecution against any of the police witnesses who possibly could have been found to have lied under oath in this second uh, inquest. And this is really important because it's so important now for the security branch officers who will be testifying throughout the course of this week to be very honest and to be very frank about what had happened uh, to Dr. Neil Agat because you recall in the 1982 inquest um, they were compelled to lie 
under oath to preserve uh, the integrity of the state and the integrity of the security branch officers. And in this particular inquest, there is no such moratorium. It's all about ensuring that truth and justice come to the fore. And it will remain to be seen as the week unfolds whether the former security branch officers who will be testifying on behalf of the police will come to the party and be open, honest and truthful in this particular court of law. Nampo. Thanks very much for that, my colleague there, Nozin Dombimi.